So I am hopeful in the midst of the darkness that we're experiencing that we're going to see a great revival. But I believe, though, as a church, it's time for us to take a stand, definitely spiritually in prayer and fasting, but I believe that it's time for us to do what I would call spirit-led activism. It's really interesting in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Well, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against spiritual forces of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. And then it says, continue to stand, put on the form of God and stand. He says that again, to resist in the evil day. And I believe that the evil day, just like the last days, we've been in the last days for 2,000 years, but that evil day is part of the last days as we draw closer to the second coming of Jesus. And we know that Satan knows his time is running out and he's doing everything possible to steal, kill, and destroy. And I believe that we're in that evil day now. And so here we are, a battle for the soul of America. And I believe it's, it's interesting. Uh, George Lewis Jr. wrote a book called The Last of the Giants, and it was a bestseller in 1991. And that book impacted my life. It was about spiritual mapping. And uh, he says, the last of the giant, the last giant is Islam. And he was talking about militant, militant Islam. But I want to submit to you that there's another giant, and that's socialism, manifested in communism in China, which is the one-party totalitarian rule, uh, manifest in North Korea, the most oppressive regime. But we see how socialism, communism, and really the ideology of Marxism is coming into our nation. You think it would be over with the dismounting of the Soviet Union, but that spirit keeps on rearing its ugly head, and of course is very strong, like I said, in China. And I really believe the real uh, nation to look at, and I agree with Chuck Pierce, is China, communist China, not the people of China. The people of China are beautiful. They're experiencing revival. In fact, two of my sons are Chinese. They married my daughters. I love China. I go there every year, except for during this COVID-19 lockdown. But I believe, though, that socialism, this extreme left that is atheistic, anti-family, anti uh, life, because, you know, they're definitely uh, for abortion, not pro-life, and they want to disrupt our nation. And I feel as a Christian, we need to take a stand. Because one of the things that they want to do is this cancel culture, once they just want to eradicate everything, the values that this nation was built on to rebuild. And with their socialistic system of economy, uh, where the government, the state owns everything and pay for your health care. They'll pay for the greening of the world. And uh, the, it just doesn't add up mathematically. We're trillions, $20 trillion in debt as a nation. And they have uh, this uh, bill just to take care of education and health. It's trillions more dollars that we just don't have. So I feel it's time to take a stand in the evil days. So how are we taking a stand? Well, in California, our governor Newsom, and again, I want to just say people are not the enemy. The enemy is the enemy. But he made a decree for the lockdown on March the 15th that businesses will be locked down. But there will be certain essential services still open. But what he deemed essential would be abortion clinics, marijuana dispensaries, liquor stores, and of course grocery stores. But the church was not considered essential. With all due respect, I want to say the church has been essential for 2,000 years. It's not just the physical well-being of individuals. The church has cared for the mental, the emotional, and, of course, the spiritual well-being of parishioners and people in the community. Anyway, we locked down because we wanted to cooperate, submit to authority. And, um, and of course, you know, the, the rationale was to flatten the curve, not inundate the hospitals with COVID patients. And our governor said out of 40 million in our state, uh, 22 million could potentially get COVID-19. And that was alarming. So we shut down. But then we began to see the data and the numbers. And with 40 million at the time that I made the decision, only 2,000 had died of COVID-19. That is like 0.0001%, less than 1%. And, um, and so I felt like the Lord say, and it's a long story, but I just want to just cut to make the long story short, to open up on Pentecost Sunday, May 31st. And I saw council, I talked to Cindy Jacobs, I talked to uh, 
of course, our, our pastors. And then I, I sought counsel from an attorney, Matt Staver of Liberty Council. I just want to make sure that we still had our First Amendment rights. And he encouraged me. He said, absolutely. We have the right to assemble and to exercise your, your faith. And so we met. Now, during that time, at the same time, Governor Newsom lifted the lockdown for the church, which we were grateful for, but he just said it has to be 100 people or less. And we had complied. And so we had less than 100 people every Sunday. But then something happened. He then said, no singing. When you meet, no singing or chanting. It's the first time an elected official told us how we're to worship. As you know, the state cannot establish religion or interfere with the free exercise thereof. And now he's telling us how to worship. And so at that point, we said, you know what, time out. We need to have uh, civil disobedience. Meanwhile, during this time, the tragic murder of George Floyd takes place, and people are protesting. And we, again, First Amendment rights. We believe in peaceful assembly to protest. But it got violent. And our governor affirmed them and said, God bless you. Your voices need to be heard. And, uh, and just keep on meeting and exercise your First Amendment rights, which is fine because he's telling the truth, but yet the double standard, he wants the protesters to meet, but the church cannot meet because he locked down the church again for the second time in mid-July. At that point, we just felt like the double standard telling us how not to sing, and then he not only locked down the church, but he locked down Bible studies. You can't even meet in, in your home uh, to study the word with your friend or fa other family members outside the nuclear family. And so at that point, we were going to continue to meet, and I called Matt Staver, and I said, Matt, we're going to still meet. What's your counsel? And he said, you know what? We're preparing a lawsuit, but we don't have a church to be a plaintiff. Would you be willing to volunteer? And I felt like the Lord gave me this passage in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, 10, 11, and 12, 13, to take a stand to resist the devil and resist evil in the evil day. And so we have sued Governor Newsom. And uh, it's been amazing to see how the church have rallied our church, but not only our church, and the network of our churches, 162 churches in California have rallied to support us, and so we're taking a stand. What I want to encourage you is that in this season, you need to take a stand. You need to do your part. And all I'm asking you to do is be spirit-led. Obey the will of God. That's why I talk about spirit-led activism. I don't think there's a greater cause than to obey the will of God. And so as you obey God's will, and at the very least, register and vote. It's amazing how there are 20 million evangelicals that did not vote in 2016. So I want to encourage you, register, vote, and then ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you're to do. And I, of course, covet your prayers. Pray for us as we have this lawsuit. We are willing to go all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary because we want to really support the religious freedom that the First Amendment gives to all churches in our nation. So I covet your prayers. Please pray for us as we are in the midst of this lawsuit, but I want to pray for you. I want to pray that uh, the Lord re revive you and uh, speak to you and show you how you can make a difference in your generation. Father, I pray for those who are watching, I pray that you would just fill each person with the Holy Spirit. We make a fresh consecration to you because your word says in Joshua 3, 5, consecrate yourself today and tomorrow God will show you amazing things. And so, Lord, as we consecrate ourselves and we give our lives afresh to you, as we submit to the loving Lordship of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would activate and use each person to make a difference in their generation. And in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, amen. God bless you.